Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and we are moving on to Unit 4, Section 9 of AP Chemistry, where we're going to get back into writing redox reactions. So we looked at redox reactions a couple of sections ago, a couple of videos ago, and we, we've learned about oxidation number. So let's go ahead and start writing some reactions again. So here's our first example. A small piece of barium metal is added to a beaker of silver nitrate solution. Now, we know that the barium metal is written as just Ba. And then the silver nitrate solution, it's, it's an ionic compound. It's soluble, of course. So we have to write it in its ionized form. So that's going to be silver, Ag+, plus, and then nitrate, NO3 negative. Now, when you're writing these redox reactions, you have to realize that a metal is going to react with a metal ion. And that means that this nitrate ion here, it's really not a part of this. This is just a spectator ion. So the barium reacts with the silver, and we can think about what the products will be. Well, we know that the barium is going to make barium ions, and that's written Ba2+. We can predict that from the periodic table. And then silver ions are going to turn into just plain old silver metal, which is written as Ag. Now, when we write this out here, we can look at this and say that it looks like barium is, its charge is increasing, so it's being oxidized, and the silver ions, well, those are being reduced. Those charges are going down to zero. So when you write the overall balanced equation, it's going to look something like this. Now, this is not a balanced equation because equations that are uh, oxidation reduction reactions have to be balanced not just in number of atoms, but also in charge. And so we have a, a plus one over here on this side of the arrow, but we have a plus two over here. So if we double this, we have to put a two right there, and now we have a perfectly balanced equation. Some students might wonder, well, why do we do that? Well, I'm going to show you a different way to write redox reactions that make balancing these a whole lot simpler so that you don't have to, to worry about this quite as much. And this is called the half reaction method. And this is a very common, very simple way to write redox reactions. We'll do several examples with this. The first one here, an iron nail is dropped into a solution of copper to sulfate. So we're going to write out what we have. The iron nail, that's just written as Fe, isn't it? Iron is just, is just iron. And then copper 2 sulfate, well, you have to realize that the sulfate is not a part of this. You have to be able to recognize that that is a spectator ion, and we just ignore it. So I'm not even going to do anything with the sulfate. I'm just going to write down the copper 2 part of this. So that's Cu2+. Remember, metals react with metal ions. And that's what we have here, a metal and a metal ion. So we have to think about what the products are going to be. Well, that iron metal is going to have to turn into some ionized form of iron. And so Fe2 plus is the most common form of that in solution. And then copper ions, that will have to turn into copper in its elemental form, which is just Cu. And so here we have the, the basis for our redox reaction. Now we do have to balance these half reactions and we have to balance them in terms of charge. And this is something that might be new for you. So let's take a look at this here. We have a charge of zero over here on the left side with the iron and a charge of plus two over here with that iron ion. So the way we balance that half reaction is we put two electrons right here. You see the those negative two charges there balance out the positive two charge and means that we have a charge of zero on both sides of the arrow now. And we can do the same thing on the next one. We have a plus two over here compared to a zero. So if we put a plus two electrons over on the left side here, now we have two balanced half reactions. And you can look at this and realize, hey, we are losing electrons here. So that looks like oxidation and we're gaining electrons in this half reaction, so that looks like reduction. Or if you prefer, you can just say the charge on iron is going up, so that's oxidation. The charge on copper is going down, that sounds like reduction. And so now we can take these two half reactions and add them together, 
and we cancel out the two electrons, and we have this as the overall balanced half reaction. And that's basically what you have. Iron plus copper two plus ions yield iron two plus ions and copper metal. So that's the balanced equation for that redox reaction. Let's try another one. And by the way, like I said, this is called the half reaction method. And this is uh, very common if you're writing redox reactions. How about a strip of zinc is placed into a solution of gold three chloride? Well, we're going to do the same thing here. Zinc is Zn, and then gold three will be written as Au3+. We have to recognize that the chloride is not a part of this. This is a metal being reacted with a metal ion. Chloride is not a part of this. That's just a spectator. So what's going to happen to zinc? Well, it's going to be turned into some, some ionic form of zinc, right? The only ionic form of zinc I can think of is zinc 2+. Plus. And then the gold 3 plus is going to turn into elemental gold, which is just Au. Now we can balance these two half reactions. Looks like on the first one here, we have a zero versus a plus two. So if I put two electrons right here, that balances it out. And then on the second half reaction, we have a plus three versus a zero. So if I put three electrons right here, it's going to balance that charge out as well. So we can say that the first one looks like an oxidation. The second one looks like a reduction. See the gold's charge is being reduced from plus three down to zero. So now it looks like we're ready to add these two half reactions together. But you might notice we have a little bit of a problem, don't we? When you add up these half reactions, your goal is for those, those electrons to basically cancel each other out. They should disappear in the overall balanced equation. And that's not what we have here. We have two versus three, and that's not going to cancel out. So in order to make these electrons cancel out, I'm going to multiply the first half reaction by three. I'm going to multiply the second half reaction by two. And when I do that, you can see that we now have six electrons on both of the half reactions that will just cancel those out. Those are just gone now. So now we have the overall balanced equation that looks like this. Three zinc plus two gold three plus ions yield three zinc two plus ions and two gold atoms. And so that's the overall balanced equation for that redox reaction. Let's try another one. Let's try a piece of aluminum foil is placed into a solution of nickel two nitrate. So the same idea here. We have aluminum foil, which is just aluminum. That's just Al. And then we have the nickel two ion. So that's Ni2 plus. We have to recognize that that nitrate is a spectator ion. It's not going to do anything. So aluminum is going to have to turn into the ionized form of aluminum. And if we look on the periodic table, we see that should be positive three in charge. And then the nickel two plus, that's going to turn into the elemental form of nickel, which is just Ni, just plain old nickel metal there. And now we get to balance these. So look at the charges. We have a zero over here, and we have a plus three over here. So if I put three electrons, that's going to balance the charge on the first half reaction. And the same thing here, I have a plus two versus a zero. So if I add two electrons right here, now that half reaction is balanced as well. And we can see that the aluminum's charge here is going up, so that looks like an oxidation. And the nickel charge is going down, so that's a reduction. So now I'm ready to add these together. And you'll see I kind of had the same problem as I did in the last one. I have three versus two electrons, and that's not going to cancel. So I have to uh, multiply equation number one by two, just like this. I have to multiply equation number two by three, just like this. And now my six electrons are going to cancel out. They're just going to disappear when I add these together. And here I have my overall balanced equation. We have two aluminum atoms plus three nickel two plus ions yield two aluminum three plus ions plus three nickel atoms. Now maybe you're wondering, how do I know that these reactions are actually going to take place? 
Well, the fact is that some metals are more reactive than others. Now, there's a hierarchy for this, and we'll talk more about this once we get into Unit 9 and talk about electrochemistry, but this is essentially the hierarchy or the uh, activity series that will show us uh, which uh, metals can react with other metals. The fact is that the metals are only oxidized by the ions underneath them on this activity series. So the implication of that is that these elements that are way up here at the top, like lithium and potassium and barium and calcium and all these up here, these are very easily oxidized. They are These are highly reactive metals. Uh, that's why I have them written high up on the, on the chart here. Uh, and that's the case because pretty much any ion underneath them, and that's a whole lot of ions, will trigger that oxidation reaction. On the other hand, these metals down here, I have these written at the lowest part of the activity series. So these are the least reactive metals. These are least commonly oxidized. There aren't that many ions underneath any of these to trigger an oxidation. So we can actually use this activity series to predict whether or not a reaction is going to take place. So for example, if we have this potential reaction, nickel being added to chromium-3 ions, well here's nickel. The problem is chromium is above it on the activity series. So the chromium-3 plus is not going to trigger the oxidation, so we would write no reaction for something like this. Or how about nickel plus tin-2 ions? Well, in this case, there's nickel. Tin-2, tin is underneath nickel. So yeah, there is going to be a reaction here. We'd have nickel-2 plus, and then tin would be the, the products there. And then how about sodium plus zinc-2 plus ions? Well, there's sodium fairly high on the activity series. Zinc 2 is definitely underneath it, so that is going to trigger the reaction. The oxidation will take place. So sodium becomes Na+, Zinc 2 plus just becomes plain zinc metal. And of course we balance it. Sodium plus barium 2 plus ions, we have sodium right there, and barium 2 plus, well that's too high, isn't it? It's actually above sodium, so this one's going to be a no reaction. And how about gold plus sodium plus ions? Well, that's, that's not going to trigger a reaction, is it? So that's a no reaction as well. So you can look at this activity series and determine whether or not a reaction is going to take place. Now, that being said, for the most part, on the AP chemistry exam, you're not going to have a no reaction. They're pretty much always going to give you uh, processes that will react. But this this activity series, you don't have to memorize it, but you have to understand how to work with it as you move forward into other chemistry classes. And if, you've, if you pass beyond general chemistry, you will be expected to know how to work with this. So we need to remember that hydrogen, and it's kind of low on here, hydrogen is a, a fairly special case. All the metals above hydrogen can be oxidized by H plus ions but only in a strong acid. So when we have H on here, we're specifically talking about H in a strong acid. And there are only six strong acids that we need to know about on the AP chemistry exam. Hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, nitric, sulfuric, and perchloric acid. We've learned those previously. Now, if you're talking about the hydrogen in water, only group one and two metals on the periodic table can be oxidized by the hydrogen in water. So that's a very limited number of metals. And when that happens, the reduction half reaction for water always looks the same. It looks like this. In fact, this is a, a reaction that would be good to just learn. Two water plus two electrons yields two hydroxide ions and a hydrogen molecule. It would be good just to know that so that you know how to write those. Let's try a couple examples. Here we have a pellet of lead metal is dropped into a solution of hydrochloric acid. So we know how to write lead, that's just PB. And then for hydrochloric acid, the only ion that's going to be imported in that is the H+. So that's the only part of this. The chloride in the hydrochloric acid is going to be a spectator ion, so we don't even have to worry about that. 
if you want to double check, you'll find that lead is going to be oxidized by the hydrogen ions, and so this, this will react. Now, the lead is going to turn into an ionized form of lead, right? The most common form of that is lead 2 plus, and then H plus is going to be reduced into just hydrogen gas. And so we have H2 as our product there. Let's go ahead and balance that with a little 2. Now we can balance the charge. We have a 0 over here and a 2 plus on this one. So I'm going to put 2 electrons right here to balance the charge. And the same thing over here. I have, it was a plus 1, but it's actually plus 2 now since I times it by 2. So plus 2 versus a 0 over here. I need to have 2 electrons on this side to balance that out. And we can look at this and realize that the lead is being oxidized. It looks like the hydrogen, of course, is being reduced. So now I'm ready to add these half reactions together. And this time our two electrons actually do fall out when you add those together. And so here is our overall balanced equation. We have lead plus two hydrogen ions yield lead two plus ions and hydrogen gas. Let's do one more example. This time we're going to take a piece of sodium metal and drop that into water. So once again, we know what sodium metal is. That's just Na. And of course, we know what water is. But when water is being reduced, you know, if, if we know that the metals are, are going to be oxidized, so water is going to be reduced, we should just write that half reaction, shouldn't we? So we can write that as two water molecules plus two electrons yield two hydroxides plus H2. We can just write that out because that's going to be the the half reaction for the reduction of water. Now Na is going to turn into Na+, and we can balance this by adding one electron over here. And we see that the sodium is oxidized, and water, of course, is being reduced. And now we're ready to add these together. And you might notice that we have to do something to the first half reaction, because two electrons and one electron will not fall out or, or disappear when we add them together. So we have to multiply the first half reaction by 2, just like this. And now the two electrons will disappear when you add them together. And we have our total overall balanced equation for this redox. Two sodiums plus two water molecules yield two sodium plus ions plus two hydroxide ions negative plus H2 gas. So that's how we can write the redox reaction, a balanced redox reaction, for this process. I hope you learned something about the activity series and how to write redox reactions. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. I want to see you on the next video where we're going to learn about how to write redox reactions for nonmetals and for a few other cases as well. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.